So um, no, we we are talking in something very unique that uh, that's somehow combining our law understanding and economics in our special language. Then, so now we can get different type of language as you mentioned earlier in economics, and also we got the legal jargon of course that's lawyers were, but. What do you think about? Is this some unique language about law and economics? Uh, well, the uh, of course, technical language is mostly consists in the names of technical concepts. Mm -hmm. right. So, in economics, there is a technical language and there's a set of technical concepts. And the technical language, it's, tech, it's justified having technical languages mm -hmm. insofar as you have technical concepts which are best named by those terms. Mm -hmm. So, for example, people who have had to make calculations about, say, how to spend money, mm -hmm. have always understood marginal reasoning. Mm -hmm. But they didn't have the name marginal reasoning until the late nineteenth century. Mm -hmm. You know the the uh, economics of marginal reasoning, the reasoning that says marginal benefit equals marginal cost when you're at a maximum. Mm -hmm. That form of reasoning arose mm -hmm. from applying calculus mm -hmm. to business transactions, mm -hmm. especially to the utilitarian theory of. Mm -hmm. business. So in the late nineteenth century we get this mathematical notion of a derivative mm -hmm. identified by an ordinary word which is marginal, mm -hmm. which stands for a technical way of reasoning. Mm -hmm. And while everybody mm -hmm. who did business always had some feeling for marginal reasoning, yep. They couldn't state it clearly until the late nineteenth century, until the economists stated what exactly marginal reasoning is. So you're talking about the marginal revolution. The say. marginalist revolution, yes, indeed. And uh, the marginalism is still a revolution. It's, it's still a revolution. <laughs> revolution for centuries. Yeah. Well, I mean, look at look at something as important and fundamental as the hand rule. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, had the rule. I mean, the hand, when hand, when Judge Learned Hand stated the rule, yep. it it became the all time favorite of economists. Yep. All it's the most, it's the all time favorite common law principle mm -hmm. for economists for two reasons. First of all, it's straightforward cost benefit analysis. That that's very straightforward. Straightforward. So economists love it. It's even put in notation. Yep. So he gave authority. In that case, Judge Hand gave authority in that yep. case to the use of cost benefit analysis in tort law. Okay. But he also didn't quite get it right because he didn't understand marginalism. He didn't okay. understand the difference between marginal mm -hmm. and total benefits and costs. So he didn't formulate the rule in the best way. Mm -hmm. So we love him in economics because not only did he that not only did he show mm -hmm. or authorize cost-benefit analysis, yep. but he also made a place for us because he couldn't get it quite right. <laughs> yeah, so that's something that I actually think about a lot about that. And there might be, we know that there's the, when you use the economics or ask economics to do the uh, the analysis of the some law regime, they may get the concept right, maybe <laughs> maybe they will get the concept right. Right. But you can see the lawyers like the the hand formula. They, they there's somehow the lawyers understanding about economics. But why the formula is so famous, the one of the reason is they're so clear and it's very yeah. simple. Yeah. You you know, Hand actually formulated his rule in words but without his notation in Two cases before U.S. v. Carroll Towing, which mm -hmm. is the famous case, it and people didn't quite see just how important it was until he put it in terms of 
the notation. Okay. 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 So, so actually, I'm thinking about that. If you are like like the Hannah formula, that's a simplified version. Maybe the, 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 or he just ignored the marginal or something like that. That's a, a simple simplified version of the equation. But because the most of lawyer can understand that. If you put a very complex uh, mathematics equation, then people don't understand. Yeah. I mean, the ordinary yeah, lawyer. That's right. So here's that's the question. Right. How can you balance the yeah. law and economics among the lawyers, not economists, among the lawyers? And yeah. Yeah, in, the language, in the language, they can understand or the easy equation. Yeah. If you are writing a law and economic book, as you know that, uh, yeah. Maybe one more equation. There's the there's a discount in reader, the less reader. <laughs> well, uh, let me try to answer that question for you okay. uh, by this example. You know, in the Christian and Jewish tradition, mm -hmm. and in the Muslim tradition, mm -hmm. there's. Uh, a great respect for the Ten Commandments. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The Ten Commandments: Thou shalt not steal, Thou shalt not kill, etc. So, mm -hmm. et because that's very clear, and uh, now that's the point. Now let's take, let's take the, one of the commandments, like Thou shalt not kill. Now, mm -hmm. that's taught as one of the commandments of God within these religious traditions. Mm -hmm. Parents teach it to their children. Preachers teach it to their congregations. Mm -hmm. But they teach it without teaching, without, sorry, it's taught to you without listing the exceptions. Mm -hmm. For example, um, in a just war, you can kill other oh, like people. Like a self defense. In self defense, you can kill mm -hmm. other people. In the states, states where you have capital punishment, the state can can execute criminals. So there's a lot of exceptions to the rule. Now, what's interesting is that the best formulation of the rule, as the history of religious teaching shows, mm -hmm. is the simple one without the exceptions. Oh, that's something very similar in our Chinese Chinese history that this. The first emperor of the Han Dynasty. Yes, uh, I think that it's the uh, uh, before centuries. Yeah, and when he tried to govern an uh, important region, he mentioned the because the in the Qin Dynasty there are so many harsh laws, right, and uh, people are punished right. uh, uh, severe, uh, harshly, but yeah. uh, when he Get a revolution. Okay, we mentioned like that, yeah. and he tried to do. He make a very clear policy that, uh, 杀人者死，伤人即到底罪 If we try to translate it like that, if you murder someone, you kill someone, then the death penalty. Right. If you hurt someone, or you steal some property, there's other kind of punishment equal to what you have done. Yeah. Right. And only simple. That's called the 约法三章 It means that free rules, free, and uh, it's very welcome by the ordinary people. That right. Because in the Qin Dynasty, there are so many laws, people don't understand that, and maybe you break something, yeah. you don't understand. But here, he tell you that he, he, actually in his verse, he didn't mention any exceptions. Well, that's the way it is with law and economics. The best, the best law and economics analysis is mm -hmm. so simple. Mm -hmm. Everybody can understand it. Everybody can see the point of it. Can see why it's yep. forceful. Mm -hmm. um, and the exceptions, all the exceptions, all the qualifications, they're not in the principle itself. Mm -hmm. They're in the exceptions. They're in the cases. Mm -hmm. uh, so we say, thou shalt not kill. Then we say, now, of course, if you execute a 
murderer, that's not killing. Mm -hmm. What do you mean it's not killing? You kill the murderer, it is killing. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right, then it is killing, but it's an exception. Yeah, there's that's always immunity, defense, or exception. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's the way the law goes, and that's the way law and economics has to go. So we have to get simple principles like the hand rule. Mm -hmm. Yep. With Incredibly simple, you know. Yep. You know, it's full of exceptions. Yep. It's full of lots of problems of interpretations. What counts as a benefit? What counts as a cost? Yeah. But but it's a wonderful rule because it's simple. It's clear. Everybody can understand it. Yeah. I think that's the also about the. I think think about a lot about the talking about the language or the if we think the law is and the language are something like a technology, then, but we can see that even today, when we try to give somebody some information by talking or by writing a book, that's not very fast. You are writing it word by word or character by character. That depends on the language you are using. So, but in centuries, the people, uh, human doing that in this way, like even you are teaching, if you're from the computer side, that's a few bit. That's very slow that each minute you just teach something and people try to understand it. So maybe in the future there's different ways to understand that as the technology become better, they insert a hard drive into yeah, your head. Yeah, that's right. And then, oh, I remember all the case. I remember all the making law. Then you try to understand it slowly that by yeah. using it. It would be nice to, before you go to bed at night, to plug your brain into something and then wake up in the morning and have learned a lot while you're sleeping. <laughs> I, you are I hope about. my children can do that. Yeah, that's very... Because we know that our language is not very fast. And maybe there's a other measure about the efficient of the language. Like we can see the hand formula. Yeah. It's very efficient, especially you to uh, you try to uh, transfer from people to people or among lawyers. Yes. My, my wife's cousin's husband writes science fiction. Mm -hmm. And he wrote a wonderful story about sometime in the future. Yep. <clears throat> when people could transfer the contents of their brains mm -hmm. and uh, this was uh, created problems for government for the state, and so they, 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 you were usually forbidden to do it. Mm -hmm. And the story is about someone who transfers his brain mm -hmm. into a vacuum cleaner. <laughs> so he breaks the law because he's, he's dying, mm -hmm. and he, he, he wants his mind to live on, so he transfers his brain into a very smart vacuum cleaner. <laughs> the vacuum, the story, the story is the story of the vacuum cleaner's life. Okay. <laughs> it's, of course, wonderful science fiction, but, uh... But it's, it's a sense it's of humor, nice. yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a nice story. Well, I, I recommend, have you read a theory of a book called Free Bodies? That's uh, written mm -hmm. by the Liu Cixin. Uh, it's a very famous fiction writer in, in China. Yeah. I think you got the translation version on, on Amazon. Oh, yeah? Yeah, and... It's called what? Free Body? Free Bodies. Free Bodies, free bodies is actually a, a physics problem, but that, oh. you, you can... There are three books. Yeah. I think in the second book he mentioned that there's an alien species, and they don't know how to do fraud because mm -hmm. they don't have they don't have the difference between the words thing and say because in their species ah, I see. in their species thinking is saying and you can observe outside yeah, then when you think something I understand it immediately so in their unique culture yeah. they don't know how to deceive isn't that interesting? That's a nice, That's very nice. Yeah, because their the, the, uh, biology yeah. structure. You know, I, I'm t some of my friends in the classics have told me that in the ancient world of Rome, yep. there were very few people who could read silently. 
Read silent. Read silently. They had to say the words in order to read them. Oh, of course. That, that's the way they've been taught. Oh, that's, today we can see the people that they, yeah. the kids, they try to read something out because they, if they don't point it and say it out, they cannot understand it. They cannot understand I, I understand it, yeah. what you're talking about. Yeah, so it's a little bit like that, isn't it? Uh, isn't yes, it? but uh, but of course that's a science fiction. But it, it, that's yeah. very it, he de develop and describe a very unique society. That it's because the wonderful. the alien they can only uh, they cannot divide the say and the disease, so they cannot understand the history book in, uh, on this planet because there are so many strategies. They cannot understand a very complex strategy. Well, what does free bodies refer to? Free bodies refer to um, if you got uh, okay, we free stars in some systems in the uh, in the universe. You got uh, sometimes you got one star like the sun system, and sometimes you got two star. They are turning around each other. That's very stable, but in a, there's another system that there there are free stars. And you can hardly do a calculation and predict what happened. And mm -hmm. the three stars actually is somehow about the story about the alien living on, the, on that system because everything is not predictable, I and see. every second they are facing this destruction. They become they have de developed a very unique culture, I and the see. way they try to invade the Earth. I see. Yeah, yeah but uh, the, one of the uh, very special is that they cannot make a difference between say and think, their culture. Yeah. And there's something else that they they are very ruthless because yeah. the environment is very harsh and uh, tomorrow yeah. is uncertain. But when facing the destruction, they got more dignity than mankind because they always face destruction. They develop a culture that, okay, that's it. That's it. That's it. Because always there's unpredictable. But that's a very good book. You can, there's three books about that. Sounds it, good. Yeah, I think they, they already translated it into English. Yes. yes. So that's about the... Uh, All right, Han Zhang, I got some things I got to do today. No gotta, problem. We then have to stop. We can, okay. Now, one thing we did not get to talk about is the economic theories of language. Yeah. Like signaling theory. Oh, yeah. You know, we talked about the language of economics yes. and the language of law. Yeah. But we did not speak about the economic theories of language that okay. are being applied to law. And that's important too. So Yeah. Okay, next time maybe, maybe. we can talk about the signaling. I'm sure, that'd be fun. Oh, that's very important because even you, we mentioned that the price is special signaling. Like your example that you talk to your lawyer, actually, yeah. you are negotiating about the price. Then you use the, the very special is that you use the price mechanism to tell you that actually whether you will win. <laughs> That's very, oh, you are very clear, like, making that very useful. Well, this is fun. Yeah. But I, I think I should, no, I just formally, I think I should congratulations on your uh, Nobel Prize. Well, uh, no, 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 Nobel Prize. Coast Prize. Thank you very much. Coast yes. Prize. Uh,